What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 20 of my Eastside Hockey Manager Early Access Let's Play here with the Toronto Maple Leafs and today I've got for you guys a live commentary against the Pens. Hopefully you guys are good. Today uh, we're gonna hopefully have a chance here to secure our playoff kind of place which is a kind of exciting thing to be able to say. Of course last year we did top our conference albeit by a fairly slim margin in the end. Today we have a chance to secure the playoff spot and really pull away at the top of our conference. So I guess we'll start by having a look at the actual kind of league as a whole. As you can see right now we sit top of the table on 99 points from 68 games played. We've had a really, really solid season. It's not been an incredible season uh, in terms of if you look at it really. Our win kind of percentage is like, well you can see it here actually, it's seven, uh, 72% which isn't un believable but it's been fairly tight in our conference and so no one's really pulled away too much we've just been pretty decent throughout and solid throughout and we've been consistent despite injuries i guess we've had from other players you'll see the pens who we placed they are actually in second they are top of their division if we just look at the divisional breakdown you can see we are top of the atlantic division of course of so the canadians and the lightning currently in second and third whereas in the metropolitan division uh, the pens are top ahead of the capitals and the hurricanes if we look at the actual league table here, though, you can see that our um, kind of division, the Red Wings and Boston, both in our division, uh, are both in the wildcard spots at the moment. But anyway, looking at the league table, we're on 99 points from 68 games played. If you look at the team in ninth, which is the Islanders, you can see that they are... Um, how many points are they behind? They are... 26 points behind us. Uh, with just... How many games left? 14 games left. We're obviously 28 points clear of them. The only team that can actually catch us at this point, I do believe, is the Blue Jackets. So perhaps a little bit of pressure on them. Of course, realistically, we have secured the playoff spot at this point. I thought I'd do this live com just because it's against the Pens who are top of their division. Of course, they're second in our conference as a result. It's going to be a tough game for us. Our penalty kill percentage has slowly been creeping down, but it is still the best in the league. But the Pens here have the best uh, power play percentage so really this is going to be a battle of the kind of I guess defense for the offense you can see here looking at it they've got a few more goals scored than us they have played one game extra but realistically seven goals scored is a pretty kind of um unattained or what's the word like I kind of if we win our next game we're probably not going to score seven goals is basically the point I'm making I guess um, but yeah, things looking pretty solid. We'll show you the player stats real quick. So Kessel and JVR are still top of the kind of player points chart. You can see Kessel on 96, JVR on 83. Worth noting that Backstrom here is in hot pursuit. The Capitals player looked pretty solid for them this year and he's doing well. As is uh, Overchin, uh, who you can see here. Um, who's doing very solid for them to the Russian. So they've got some strong players there in hot pursuit, but right now we are ahead of them just, not only in the table, but I guess in the player charts too. So that's kind of what's been going on. Really since the last episode, I've not played that many games. I'm thinking about making this the last commentary of the regulation and kind of regular season, just because if we secure the playoff spots, we're going to look solid. And really, I can't see us finishing anywhere but top unless things go horribly, horribly wrong, in which case I may be kind of inclined to do a commentary. Uh, I believe our last game of the season is against the Canadians. I can just check that real quick. Uh, in fact, no, it's not. I, I've lied. It's against the Blue Jackets. Have we played the Canadian for all our games we have? Um, but the Blue Jackets could still be... A, uh, well, it's probably not going to be a big one now, I think about it. I could do the Ottawa game, but I don't know. I think we'll just go straight into the playoffs, if I'm honest. I hope you guys don't mind that. If we look at our actual team and kind of what's been going on on the roster, still having issues with players really struggling. I've got all these players now set to the resting fitness kind of training setup. I'm hoping that's going to help them recover. Uh, a little bit so we have that I guess but really things are going okay despite perhaps the injuries to Kessel and such that we've had we've kind of gone through that right now we're looking fairly strong and uh, I'm looking for a good performance here against the Pens to really see us over the line and into the playoffs if we look at just how we performed since last episode I'm not going to go into too much uh, detail but last game was against the Blackhawks since then a few defeats the first of which came against the uh, Kings we were actually beating them no sorry not, why am I saying we were beating them that's a lie they, they, they destroyed us what I meant to say was that um, 
going into this game, they actually sacked their coach. I don't know how I got, we, we were beating them from that, but they sacked their coach just before this game, and that seemed to really galvanise them. You can see here, Carter grabbing a hat-trick, the Canadian, for them, um, and they, they won quite convincingly at home. The next game... Not the most convincing one in the world against the Coyotes, a team who have really struggled uh, this year. They've been bottom of their conference for a lot of it. Recently, they have had a little bit of, res of re resurgence in the Western Conference. But you can see here, looking at it, um, we left things late. We actually scored when they pulled their goalie with uh, four seconds left on the board. So really, this was 3-2, and it was anyone's game up until that kind of last little bit at the end. But we held on for the win there. The next win, again, not a massively convincing one. We beat the Flames here 3-2. Um, it didn't take overtime. Oh, no, sorry. It did take overtime. I don't know where I'm going today. Where am I? Um, as you can see here, Andrew Shaw going crazily good for us, getting that overtime goal for us. He's been great for us this year, Shaw, uh, and he turned up big there. We then beat the Dallas Stars, who, we, of course, we have a draft pick of. We then took on the Flyers, who were bottom of the conference at the time of this game. You can see we beat them 6-2 in really convincing fashion. Uh, Kessel grabbing two, Bozak panic. Kadri and Fratting grabbing the others for us. We then beat the Canucks 3-1. Uh, Good result this one. Um, not too many goals. An unusually low scoring game for us. And again, that pattern emerged and kind of reproduced, I guess, against the Senators who we played. Uh, where we won 3-1 here. We went 1-0 down in this one uh, after the Carlson scored for them. Made a great little comeback uh, to get a win there. We then had to play another game the, um, the next day, the third game in three days. The schedule hitting us pretty hard there as we took on the Ducks. This was a disappointing result. The Ducks going very strong in their conference. A team who, again, we have a draft pick of, but this time they got the better of us. They won 4-2. Pretty disappointing all in all, but they just really outplayed us. And I kind of feel like the fact that it was our fourth game in five days really hit us hard. Anyway, the last game going into this game was another really low-scoring game as we lost 2-1 against the Devils. They defended really admirably. Kessel did get a goal, but that was not enough for us as Rutu uh, got the all-important goal for them, the Finnish international. And it saw, uh, well, as you can see, the Devils get enough 2-1 win. So that's kind of what's been going on there. There's not been too much really to tell you guys about. Um, I have made a few little transfers, which I guess we can talk about. I picked up Michael Garnett on a free. The reason I brought him in was just because we were short of a goalie. So I picked him up and then I've sent him straight to the Marlies. So he will hopefully do a job there. We do also have a few future players coming in. Uh, I didn't really talk about these too much. Um, I kind of, they slipped my mind if I'm honest last episode. But we have a few players coming in. The first one here, Alexander Salak. Uh, looks like a pretty decent goalie, this Czech Republic uh, player. You can see good backup keeper. Nothing incredible, but he's going to come on in on very low wages. The next player we have is Andre. Uh, I guess this would be Loktinov. Loktinov. We'll go with it. Uh, you can see here he's 25. Uh, he's a very solid player. The one kind of worry, I guess, is the fact he's slightly injury prone. But he has second line potential, potentially. Uh, you can see if we look at his history, he actually played in the NHL for a year or two with the Kings. But he did go to the AHL repeatedly before moving to Russia to play for Lokomotiv. Uh, and really, since then... Not, not a lot's been happening in his way. No one's really come in for him. But look at his stature. Because he's had two very good years in the Russian League. So I'm hoping we can make the most of that. So we've got him coming in. And the last player we have coming in is Mafis uh, Olim. I guess we'll call him. 30 years old. Norwegian. Very low wages again. But this guy looks like a talent. Coming in as a free. You can see here if we look at it. He's joining us at the end of the year. If we look at his history. You can see that he played has played in the Swedish Hockey League for a number of years. Never made an NHL appearance. So we're going to be laying a gauntlet out for him. You can see this year, he's done pretty well. He's got 35 assists and 16 goals in 55. He is kind of a little bit old, but he looks like a pretty good talent with some really solid physicals, decent mentals, and some okay technicals. Uh, he comes in on low wages, and I hope he's going to be able to contribute. I'd be interested to kind of hear what you guys think about these free transfers. I'd also appreciate it if you let me know if there's anything I should know about free transfer rules and such in the NHL because who knows, maybe these players come in and I've overlooked some really obvious rule where they can't play for whatever reason. Let me know if that is the case because it could be <laughs> for all I know. But anyway, that's what's kind of been going on there. In terms of what's been going on elsewhere, I've been weighing up trade options, you know, going into the draft. I've been weighing up the possibility of maybe trading away some of my bigger players for young prospects. 
Like, there, there could be an opportunity to trade, for example, Kessel for Jack Eichel. Now, whilst we are having a lot of immediate success, and I could just stick with what we've got, I'd really like to build kind of a legacy, I guess, kind of a... um. What would you call it? I guess a legacy is the word I'm looking for, of kind of a golden generation of players. And with players like Kessel and JVR performing so well, I wonder if it opens up the opportunity to trade them away to really kind of create a dynasty, I guess. The worry here is that I don't know for certain if it's the fact that Reamsdyke and Kessel are absolutely incredible or if my tactic is really solid, which is making them perform well. In trading them away, I could be giving away a lot. They probably aren't the players I'd look to trade away. I'd probably probably look slightly further down the line at players like Bozak, who at 29 is an incredible player who we could probably get some very, very strong young prospects for. Maybe that's completely the wrong way to go. That's just something that's kind of popped into my mind as an idea. It's kind of been knacking there at the back. The trade deadline's passed, so it's got to be on hold anyway. So um, maybe we'll see how we get on in the playoffs, and depending on how we get on. Assuming we get there, of course, um, we can kind of explore that option further. But anyway, we're going to lock in our squad here. We are taking on the pens. You can see we do have a few players a little bit tired, but we're going to just push through it today. Hope that we can secure a playoff spot. I'm pretty sure this would be the game to secure it mathematically. If it's not, I've done my maths wrong and I've picked the wrong episode to live con. But with all the games being played on different days, it's always tricky to know for certain. And well, that is a great start. Shaw has scored for us. JVR with the assist. Kadri playing centre for us, I think, was involved in the build-up there. And uh, we take an early lead in the first against the Pens. Although, uh, there is another chance here. We're on the attack, actually. This is a great little run by Megna. Pulls it back, and that is Gorfier, a player who, at one point, I was looking to trade away this year because a lot of teams were highly kind of tipping him. But the youngster is kind of forcing his way into kind of contention, I guess. He's played very well for us of late, and he's kind of... Leaving me in a situation where at one point this season I was looking to trade him away, but right now he is in fine, fine form. And, well, another player who's in fine form is Reamsdyke. Kessel with the assist there. Another nice goal. We make it 3 0. We've had some cracking results in the live comms of late. Beat Boston a few episodes ago, 4 0. We beat. Um, the Blackhawks, I think it was 6-2 in the last live com. It was a very convincing win, that's what I remember about it. And here we're, we're playing very convincing at the moment. We're 3-0 up, or 3 nothing up. We're on the attack again, and we've scored again. Reamsdyke, maybe he's heard the fact that I'm weighing up trading him away, and he's trying to convince me that he deserves to stay, because right now he's got two in the second already, and we're only 10 minutes into it. Um, we've just performed very well here. Really, really pleasing to see what we've got going for us. And, well... If a win like this is the kind of performance we can put in in the playoffs, we could go very far this year. Last year we were unfortunate to get drawn against Boston and then to lose to them. I think there were three overtime losses that we had in the in the series, which really hurt. But you can see here, we've performed great against the Pens. We've won 4-0. Not many highlights, unfortunately. That's been a trend of the last few episodes. But we have dominated that game. They were second in the conference, and we have beaten them very convincingly That really there. We were... 4 nothing up after the second. The third was very quiet, but it didn't need to be a kind of a busy game, a frantic game. We did what we needed to do early on. And um, as you can see here, Kessel has got six goals in five consecutive games, making him one of the hottest-handed players in the league. We do qualify for the playoffs, so I can do maths. So that's a good sign. And uh, as you can see here, we go in looking very, very strong. Unfortunately, we have got a little bit of catching up if we want to get past that Penn's goals for record. Although... That game and shutting them out and also getting four goals ourselves is a really good to maybe get us, uh, I guess, the, the claim to fame of maybe having the best defence and best offence in our conference. That would be kind of a cool thing to maybe go for. Um, as I mentioned, I think the next episode is going to be the playoffs. I'm probably going to go for a similar format to last year, so hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, as always, smash the like button. If you've got any comments about the players I picked up on freeze, I apologise for the fact this is a shorter episode. Not so much to tell you guys about at the moment. Uh, I guess one thing we can just quickly wrap up on is a quick overview of our younger prospects who, of course, are playing down in their junior team still. So here we have uh, Ryan Pylan. He's actually improving slowly but surely. Um... He's hitting has improved and so is his passing, as of a few of his mentors. He's definitely stepped things up more recently. There was a period where I was a little bit worried he just wasn't improving, but he is slowly starting to show signs of that. You can see so far this year he's got 33 assists and 21 goals as a defenseman, uh, which in 68 games played is pretty decent for him. 
Lawson Cruz, you can see here, he's probably the one of the three kind of young players who we were really looking at who were our first round picks last year who hasn't kind of developed a ton. Um, I don't know if that's just bad luck. If you look at how he's actually played, he's got 34 assists and 21 goals. So he's got more than a point a game with 55 points in 54 games. So he's not playing badly, but he just hasn't improved much kind of attribute-wise. And of course, last but not least, we do have here Conor McDavid, who's uh, continuing to improve a little bit. Not showing massive signs of improvements. Just before Christmas, he showed a real spike kind of in his development. Since then, it's been a little bit kind of even, but you can see for him, 78 points in 66 games played. All of our players who we drafted last year looking and showing very promising signs for the future. They will definitely be playing in the Marlies next year, I believe, if they're eligible. So that's something to look forward to. May even bring them into our first team. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what's been going on here, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, smash the like button. If you've got any comments, as I already mentioned a little bit earlier, let me know. And uh, other than that, it is me, Jack. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.